there, it's been a while, so before I commence my commentary, uh, some housekeeping, please subscribe to this uh, broadcast and share widely. It's never easy speaking to a camera, if you'd solo, if you'd like to see more of uh, this effort, please help me along. Okay then, where were we? To the meat of the matter. Oh, it's biblical, Mr. Zelensky. To normies, a leader who doesn't plead for the lives of his people is a failed leader. Diplomacy, negotiations, a ceasefire, that's the language clear-thinking people ought to wish instinctively to hear when they see the immiseration of Ukrainians and the destruction of their cities. To my knowledge, not before the war and not now has Zelensky initiated, partaken in, or been urged to pursue serious high-level talks with Putin. And while there is some indication that Zelensky might be inching closer to agreeing to neutrality for Kiev and security for Moscow, publicly the leader has done nothing but snarl his contempt for Russia, roaring obscenities at the Kremlin. Not helpful. This is not diplomacy, but yet more political posturing and provocation. But then again, Zelensky, an actor, could be prepping, prepping to appear before that central and universal seat of asininity and stupidity, Hollywood's Oscars. The Hebrew Testament, I don't say Old Testament because though old, it's never out of date, is full of examples of leaders pleading, even bargaining, for the lives of the stiff-necked people. Abraham haggled ingeniously with the Almighty over Sodom and Gomorrah. Queen Esther petitioned mighty King Xerxes on behalf of the Persian Jews. And Moses did the same before Pharaoh for his enslaved people. As another Hebrew, yours truly has written, he who saves you from war is better than he who sends you to war. That's what real leadership is about, before or all else. Uphold and fight for the people's natural right to live peacefully. By these reasonable and rational criteria, Zelensky and Biden are failed leaders for doing nothing but bait and goad the Russian bear. If the American people were, God forbid, invaded, as has Ukraine, you can be sure that American leaders would likewise hold court from their safe rooms and underground luxury bunkers and give cheery addresses. I'm sure in syntax as fractured and similarly studded with non sequiturs, while the bombs fell on we the people, Churchillian they'd call themselves. To the American Jacobins and their Ukrainian Zelenskyite puppets, talking our values is all it takes to make a good leader. Talk the neocon talk. And that Zelensky certainly did in his cameo appearance before another seat of stupidity, the U.S. Congress. While the man deftly drew on all the clichés of American life in the shallow end, and these banalities having gone global, apparently, Vladimir Zelensky droned on about democracy, our values, and MLK, offering his incoherent, or quite bizarre twist on the I have a dream American ubiquity, said Z. I have a dream. I have a need. I need to protect our skies. I need your help, which means the same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. Translated, I think, when Zelensky tells you he needs your help, you should feel the same as when you hear MLK's, I have a dream, or something. Well, I have a dream. I have a need too. Some quid pro quo, perhaps, Mr. Zelensky, some tit for tat, were you so nice to President Trump? During the US facilitated Egyptian uh, Lotus Revolution, I reminded Tea Partiers, now termed deplorables, of the following. More often than not, Americans who yearn for the freedoms their founders bequeath to us are labeled demented, deranged, dangerous and certainly undemocratic. 
I've yet to hear any liberty-deprived people the world over stand up for the Tea Party patriots now called deplorables. When the people do, when the world's people do, I'll gladly galvanize on their behalf. Zelensky is America's perfect prototype Jacobin puppet, beloved by both political factions because he is the creation of the Uni Party's foreign policy. The first, the Republicans, have reverted to the neoconservative mean. The Republicans are pushing for, for war, namely that no-fly zone non-stop. They are admonishing Biden for his so-called weakness, for that is how they frame barely avoiding a nuclear war with Russia. The Wall Street Journal has only rebuke for Biden's policy of containment against Russia. On Fox News, it's rah-rah for war, namely variations on a no-fly zone over Ukraine all day long. The female journos, those mute-button pundits especially, choose to use incendiary phrases pregnant with provocation such as a red line. This was a red line for Obama. Will Biden consider it a red line? More recently, Brett Baer and guests have been brainstorming about the level of atrocity to be tolerated before war could be comfortably pursued. Even Cavuto, mild-mannered, floats regime change in Russia as a prerequisite for negotiations. That but never good faith negotiations. What a shame. 